How's it going? Good. We're glad you're here. Welcome. Thanks for being here this morning. Pray that your Christmas was amazing. Can sometimes be bumpy. People coming together that don't see each other all that often sometimes. And, you know, hopefully the Lord will and stress wasn't high. You had a great time of celebration, celebrating the Lord's birth. Uh, I'm, if we haven't met, my name is Mark Edwards. I'm one of the pastors here, and it's my privilege to uh, share with you this weekend. Pastor Jesse, our senior pastor, and his wife Lori and the kids are down in California enjoying some time with family, uh, well-deserved. And so he uh, invited me to, to be a part of this weekend's services. So we're excited. I'm excited and humbled to be here. Uh, in true form of Pastor Jesse, I love this so much about him. He is a planner. He gets organized. He sets up the calendar way in advance. So he was able to come to me in November, early November, and say, hey, here's the topic. This is the series. So you get to talk about heaven. Like, awesome. Excellent. I'm excited about that. I have discovered the Bible talks so much about heaven, and we get the opportunity today together to Lord willing, just to focus on heaven as we step into this new year. So before we jump in, how about if we pray? Amen. Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this time of year. What a sweet time of year it is. I pray that through the first that maybe we've experienced in our families of change, uh, that as we transition to 2020, I pray, Lord, that uh, through this Christmas season, it's been a time of refreshment for us. Pray that you've been glorified in every home. And God, again, we thank you for your love for us. We commit this time to you and all that we hear today. We surrender to your Holy Spirit, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, 2020 is coming up. And generally, you know, you get to the last part of the year. You know, everything changes. As soon as Christmas is over, you start seeing the commercials. You start having the conversations. What's the one thing that a lot of people put for, first and foremost as they prepare for a new year? They make New Year's. Yeah, this will be a participative service a little bit more than normal, just so you know. Uh, they're softballs every time. The, fill in, the verbal fill in the blanks are usually pretty easy. New Year's resolutions, you're right. Some of us make them, some of us don't. Um, some of us make them, some of us don't. <clears throat> I'm not a fan. I'd like to have a conversation with the person that uh, came up with the idea. Frankly, I'm, you know, I'm not a fan, but that's okay. And the reason I'm not a fan isn't because of what it represents. It's just the fact that, you know, I'm an extreme guy. My needle kind of never hovers in the middle a whole lot. It's either over here or over here. So when that needle gets moved over to these resolutions and planning, you know, it doesn't hover in here. It just go all the way over, pegs all the way over to the side. And uh, the reality is with New Year's resolutions, the, re the fact is that Generally, 80 to 90 percent of all resolutions don't make it into February. They just don't. And the first and foremost thing that most people are focused on is has to do with what? What we eat or how much we eat and how we want to weigh less, right? And then it's generally close second for those. For many, it's, it's you know, I'm going to quit smoking. And then the third one is something needs to change in our finances. That's why financial peace kicks off in January. It's a topic. It's prevalent. I don't think it's just because we, we spent, some of us, a considerable amount of money for Christmas. Some of us not. But there's that season where, like, we want to refocus. We want to step in the new year with a different attitude. Today, we're not going to talk about New Year's resolutions. Does that sound good? <laughs> Okay, well, good. That's why we didn't have much of a response on the first verbal fill in the blank. Now I understand. Okay, we're going to talk about goals, though. We're going to talk about the one goal that really each of us should be more focused on each and every day, and that's the goal of heaven and the truth of heaven and why that should be a forefront of what we see in front of us each and every day. So that's what we're going to talk about. You're going to have, a, there'll be a lot of scriptures that'll come up. Uh, obviously, they're not in your notes. We don't have those uh, in this season. But know that if you'd like the references, if you can't write them down fast enough, man, just email me here at the church. I'll send you my, my notes with all the scripture on there. Uh, the first one that we read, John 14, frankly, that's the whole message right there. Like everything's wrapped up into that. You know, when we think about heaven and the questions we have about heaven, Jesus said, listen, here's the deal. 
I'll be coming back. I'll be coming back from heaven and I'm going to take you to be with me and we'll be there forever. And this series is all about where Jesus is. We're with Jesus. God is with us. He's with us here. He'll be with us there. And that's a guarantee for those of us who have a relationship with Jesus. That's what we're going to focus on today. The thing I think I need to focus on for this year, first and foremost, is probably you're going to see me do a lot of this. I'm getting tired of doing this. I'm probably going to have to turn the corner, go see the eye doctor and get glasses. Optometrist, thank you. I hear you over there. I hear you. Yep. Hey, I just didn't want to risk saying it wrong, so I just said eye doctor. That's just the way I roll. So we're going to talk about heaven today. Philippians chapter 3, the goal of heaven. Philippians chapter 3. We're going to start there. This one's not up on the screen. One of the few that won't be. Philippians chapter 3, verse 14. Paul says this, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The goal of heaven, the goal of heaven. We think about heaven, we have conversations about heaven. If we're parents, it's inevitable. You're gonna have that conversation or you had it with your kids about heaven. It's a privilege to talk with your kids about it. The reality of heaven, as we try to grasp on the reality of it is we really are gonna have more questions. We're gonna, we're gonna ask a lot of questions. And sometimes one question leads to four or five. It wouldn't surprise me today, you'll notice in the message it kind of leads that way, but you may leave here with some questions about heaven. Can I just tell you right up front, the best source for the answers is God's Word. I've been blown away by how much God's Word, ta God talks about heaven in Scripture. And uh, if I were to go downstairs with the first question that sometimes we think about, and I were to go down and ask it to the children and Grace Kids, old, if anybody, any child old enough to respond that could talk about it, if I asked them this question, they'd do the same thing. I would ask the question, so tell me, boys and girls, where's heaven? What do you think they would do? They'd do this, right? It's just a natural thing. I remember when my kids were young, and, and they said, well, Dad, you know, if heaven's there, you know, the bad place, that means it's down there. And their voice would change, like, down there. <laughs> it's true. Heaven is upward. Heaven is up. Not profound, but it's where we start today. Heaven is up. How do we know that? Because Scripture tells us. Psalm 123, 1. Lord, I look up to you, up to heaven where you rule. The Psalms have so many references about heaven. It's up. It's up. Jesus had this moment. Matthew. Jesus took the five loaves and two fish. We know the story. Hopefully the event in history where he multiplied the bread and the fish. Looked up toward heaven and ask God's blessing on the food. We look up to heaven. Why? Because heaven is up. It's above. It's higher than. It's above all things. Heaven is above. It's elevated. Have there been times in your life where you've gone, I need to rise above this situation. I need to rise above it. Maybe it's in an attitude. Maybe it's just like, I need to get through this. I'm going to rise above it. I'm not going to let this bring me down, so I'm going to look up. And when we look up, that's where heaven is. It's above all these things. It's exciting to think that way. I hope and pray today that heaven is above and beyond what we can imagine. It's amazing. Now, when we think of heaven and try to picture it, as much as Hollywood would, could spend bazillions of dollars, they still can't adequately come together to show what heaven's going to look like. We just don't know. We, don't, we can't comprehend it. We can't comprehend it. Now, they try, and most of the time, there's one kind of picture that, that most of us have of heaven, or we see of heaven. And you know why I know that? Because in the bumper video, when the word heaven came up, did you see what was in the background? Anybody pay attention? Thanks. It's not a big deal, but it's a reality. <laughs> clouds. There's clouds. It must, heaven must be clouds above in the clouds. Does that sound exciting to you? So when I go to heaven, I'm going to hang out in the clouds. <laughs> Woo-hoo-hoo! Right? Right? But, it's, but that's what we try, to, we try to formulate, right? We're trying to get a picture of heaven. Well, it must, it's above. We know that. It's up in the clouds. No, it's greater than that. It's greater than that. But that's what we try to do. We try to describe it like we have a, a staff member whose husband, he is like he loves to surf. Like if the, as long as the water's not frozen solid, he'd probably try to surf in it at some point. He loves to surf. Heaven for him is going to be those Maui-sized, Hawaiian-sized, Honolulu-sized waves that you ride without falling off your board. 
Heaven's going to be where I can hike out in, the, in God's creation, enjoy beautiful sunrises and sunsets forever. Forever. When I was starting out in ministry and realized that in, the children needed to have music as part of their experience at church, we did karaoke worship. That's what we did. Trust me, if you were sitting over by me, you'd realize that was a good way for me to lead worship. It was with a microphone with a lot of loud music and vocalists behind me on the CD. And we sang a song called Big House. And it talked about heaven. It's a big, big house with lots and lots of rooms. Kind of like that scripture. It's got a big, big table. With lots and lots of food. It's got a big yard where we can play football with the Seahawks every day. Those that know Jesus. It's a big, big house. It's my father's house. You know, we have these pictures of heaven. We try to help kids and all of us try to grasp it, but it's above. The first thing is it's above. It's above everything. The second thing is not only heaven is up, but also heaven is home. It is our home. Now, we have a home here. Some of us have beautiful homes here. They're not permanent. They're temporary. Heaven is our permanent home. It's where we should be focused on. We'll get to the application part here in a few minutes. Hebrews eleven sixteen says this, but we are looking for a better place. Are you looking for a better place? If you are, it's a heavenly place. That's heaven. That's our home. Philippians 3, verses 20 and 21. But our homeland is in heaven, and we are waiting for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, to come from heaven. By his power to rule all things, he will change our simple bodies and then make them like his glorious body. Home is heaven. Heaven is home. What does it look like? Well, the psalmist says this. I don't have it in, in my, on the screen, but he, the psalmist in chapter 16 tells us that heaven is a place of eternal pleasures. <laughs> eternal pleasures. Not suffering, but pleasures. Like, I'm going to be in heaven. You and I, who know Christ, are going to be in heaven, hanging out with Jesus, because he's there, in our permanent home, our permanent residence, whatever that may look like. I, I don't even, I can't imagine, but it's going to be wonderful all the time. That's a cool thing. If there's something we should be looking forward into 2020 with, it's the, it's the reality and truth that heaven is the place we're going to end up no matter what. That's where we go. It's, it's our permanent home. And the truth of the matter is, there's times in our world when it's good to think about that. I, I have this card here. It says on it, it does get better than this. This is a card. I may use this one myself. Um, you know, we got to remember that as, no matter what we're experiencing, it's going to get better. It's better than this. Like we should have this taped in our car, on our dashboard, so that when we're driving on 167 and it turns into a parking lot, it does get better than this. <laughs> right? When we're getting up and getting ready in the morning, this should be taped up in our bathroom. Something like this, because if the day ahead is we know what we're looking towards, it's going to be a difficult day. It's going to be full of maybe a difficult conversation or a, a a situation that we're, we're not really looking forward to, we should see this and be reminded it does get better than this. For some of us in this room and have attended this weekend, either directly or indirectly, somewhere in 2019, you were given information about a diagnosis that changed the rest of your life here on earth. It does get better than this. I am so grateful we should be, when we come in for worship, man, we're coming in celebrating the fact that this is not our permanent home. Heaven is. Like, the fact that we get that, that is our gift from our Heavenly Father to us through His Son Jesus, that we get a permanent residency in His presence. If that doesn't just make us want to sing a little louder, most of us, some of us shouldn't, sing a little louder or more from the heart then it should be that. And in our best day here on this planet, it gets better. When everything goes right at Christmas, there may be a few of us like Christmas was like, that's the best it's ever been. Like all our kids, they opened up one gift at a time and brother watched sister open the gift and they were so patient. They said, good job, sister. That never happens, right? 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 When every relationship is just spot on and it's perfect, like when everything's working out and you've got 
the perfect job and there's no problems at work. When all that stuff, when you're driving up 167 and you would swear that there's an emergency vehicle behind you because all of a sudden it's wide open going up the highway. We drove up to a stoplight yesterday and the light, turn light changed green as soon as we pulled up. It was amazing. It's usually an intersection. You wait two lights just to get through, right? It's still, heaven's better than that. The best we can experience here pales in comparison to what we have in store for us in heaven. I'm so excited about that. This message was built for me. I am so thankful that Jesse said, this is going to be your weekend because I needed this. We need this going into 2020. We need to know that this world on its best or worst day isn't even close to what God has for us in heaven. It should change how we think and it should change how we live. And then the other thing that's really cool about heaven that God tells us about, we read it in this last scripture, we get a brand new body. Yes. <laughs> brand new. I mean, don't keep your eyes up. We, we get a brand new body. <laughs> Dustin, we get a brand new body in heaven. That man, you need to hear his testimony. He loves Jesus with all his heart. We get a brand new body. Now, how do I know that? Well, if you look at Scripture, there's actually, God gives us glimpses of it. Now, when Jesus came back after being crucified, buried, came back to life, he returned to his best friends, the disciples, in his new glorified body. Glorified body. Arnold Schwarzenegger body. I know, it wasn't that. <laughs> but it was different. And you know what? We'll actually, people recognize us in heaven. You know why? Because eventually the disciples recognized Jesus, even though he was in a different body. Now, get away from the movie idea of, well, he must have just came and his clothes were bright white. They were all clean. They just weren't dirty anymore. No, it's not that. I don't know what it looks like, but it's different. And we'll recognize each other, even in our glorified bodies. Now, I've been married 32 years, and I got to tell you, if somebody told me that my wife wasn't going to recognize me in heaven, it would destroy me. It would. Like, why would God put us in relationships here and then not be able to recognize those people in heaven forever? I'm so excited. You should be too. Heaven is a place that's up and it's a place that's permanent and we're going to hang out with Jesus forever and that's a good thing. Oh, that's awesome. So what's the application for now? Going into 2020, what's the application? What should we be focused on? I'm glad you asked. This is how, should it make a difference now? Does it make a difference now? How can it make a difference now? Well, here's where it starts for me, and I hope this helps for you. The first thing, the application for us for now, and moving into 2020 about focused on heaven, is it, it can remove the doubts that we may have had about heaven and about our lives. It removes any doubt. Being focused on heaven removes any doubt. Like maybe you've been unsettled about this, this truth of heaven. Like, but this is, like I'm, this world, there's so much I'm so enjoying. This is a place where it's just, I know it's hard sometimes. And I know we go through difficulty, but man, all the people I love are here. Yeah, they're gonna be there too. As believers, we're gonna be together forever. Yeah, so why do I do deal with doubt? Well, it's normal. It's normal to kind of question things. We're not capable of co totally understanding. Why do I know that? Well, because personally, there was a time in my life, maybe, I don't know, five years ago or so, I, there was a week, week and a half. I'm probably the only one. You've probably never done this. Just me. I lost sleep every night for a week, week and a half. I was wrestling with the reality of heaven and how much I didn't want, I didn't want to lose what I had. Is that crazy? I mean, for me, who've been a, I've been a believer since I was 15. Here I was in my late 40s, early 50s, struggling with heaven. And that's probably not you, but I was. It took me a week and a half. You know what I had to do? Well, I had to do a lot of talking. Should have done more listening. Probably would have happened in a couple nights instead of a week and a half. But I did a whole lot of talking to God. Spent a lot of time looking in Scripture about heaven. And it all boiled down to the same Jesus who saved me made a promise that I was going to be with him forever in heaven. That was, should be good enough, but it wasn't. But eventually it was as I start really realizing God says a lot about heaven, a lot of promises. It's not just up here like we have this perception of heaven. It's going to be real. It is real. 
And as I work through that, I realize I got a lot to look forward to. God's given me a lot here, which it'll always be better than this because of heaven. And that's what we have to look forward to. So one, focus, focus, focusing on heaven should help us with the doubt that creeps in. 1 John 5, 11 and 12 says this. This is what God told us. God's given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life, but whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's a promise. We have him for eternity. We have him for eternity. We struggle, doubt. We have pictures that we see in our heads, that we see around us, that creates these images in our head that creates doubt. I'll give you an example. Growing up, working for my dad, I, you know, even at 14 when I started working, but as I came to know the Lord, I was in an environment at work where, you know, everybody tells jokes. They have, you know, the guys I worked with, they told jokes. And a lot of times those jokes had to do with going to heaven. Like those jokes about lining up. Who, who, where do you line up in front of by the, you know, what have we heard a lot of you? Go stand in front of the pearly gates. gates. And we go meet a guy named St. Peter. See, you, you know what I'm saying here. That's not the picture. Like all these jokes are about, yeah, you know, we're lining up. And I think, well, yeah, imagine if it was like that. So we're lining up in this long line. We're waiting for our turn to stand in front of St. Peter. And we just hope that he will let us into heaven. No. No. He's got this book. Let me see. Let me, is your name, what's your name again? Mm -mm. Oh, hmm. Come back and see me again. He doesn't do that. He doesn't go, mm hmm. We don't get in this line for heaven. You see, it's, it's kind of like if I was, I'm a kid at heart. I think of Disneyland. You ever been in a long line at Disneyland? Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember as a kid being in long lines at Disneyland. I remember even early on when my kids were little, the first time we went, two and a half hours for, it's a small world after all. <laughs> right? It was the best ride ever. Dad, let's do it again. Mom, let's do it again. Right? But I had to wait two and a half hours. Heaven's not like that. Heaven's like Disneyland now. You get a fast pass. Oh, I'm going straight in. Jesus gives us the fast pass. Jesus says to us, I love you so much. I come into this world to be flesh, to grow, to live, to die for you. There's no lines. You're not perfect. That's why I came. We're not going to go up in front of a board and go, Peter and Paul and whoever and go, yeah, mm -hmm, what do you think? Should we let him in? No, Jesus says, paid the price for you. Come on, spend eternity with you. That's what we're going to do. I'm so excited that that's the case. There's nothing we can do. Why do I know that? Because Bible tells us that, Ephesians chapter 2. <laughs> I mean that you've been saved by grace through believing. You did not save yourselves. It was a gift from God. It was not the result of your own efforts. You cannot brag about it. Don't, don't feel bad about the God. I'm messing with him this morning. He knows I'm out of order already, and he's staying up. So God bless you. Thank you. We didn't earn a thing. It was a gift. Why is heaven such a big deal? Because we didn't earn it to begin with, and yet heaven, beyond what we can imagine, is in store for you and me that know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It's a guarantee. We can't, we don't lose it. We don't do something tomorrow. Like, listen, if there's a day when you live a perfect day, you let me know. Let me know what you did to make it through. Whether it's by thought or by action. We're imperfect, flawed people that are saved by grace. I'm so thankful for that. And you should be too. This world's gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard. Look up. Rise up with your perspective and your vision. If you're doubting, it's okay. It, it, don't, don't beat yourself up that you doubt. Seek the Lord to help you in your doubt so that when you're settled, you can communicate heaven to those around you, your kids, your grandkids. How do I talk about heaven? I don't know. How about you know with 100% confidence what God's word says about heaven, how you feel about it? Why don't you just share that? You don't have to go deep. You can stay in the shallow end of the pool. That's where I live, the shallow end. Like we could talk about heaven for weeks and weeks and weeks. You're getting 30 minutes. It's okay. It doesn't change the reality of heaven that we're, we're, we get it. That's our gift, our eternal gift. So it can be unsettling. And then there's anxiety and struggle that we have in our lives, don't we? 
Like if you were to look back on this year and just contemplate it for a minute, phew, any, I don't want to go back to the beginning of this year. I'm good with whatever God used me for this year. I'm not so good with some of the things I've had to deal with this year. Just going to be real. And I know God's got a plan for 2020. I know he does. For me and for you. And that plan should be first and foremost that we look towards heaven, not our circumstances. Because the circumstances can just tear us apart and pull us down. But God says something about that too. Huh, Mark? Show us. There it is. I didn't even have to ask the verse. We have small troubles for a while now, but they are helping us gain an eternal glory that is much greater than the troubles. We set our eyes on what we see. We set our eyes not on what we see, but on what we cannot see. There's the rub. Looking at something we can't see. How do we do that? Well, Scripture helps us big time. Being in relationship with Jesus, that's the foundational thing. Like that relationship just solidifies knowing that heaven's coming. It's coming. But friends, if our eyes get down into our stuff and we just focus on that, we're missing what's ahead of us, what's above us, what we have to look forward to. Focus on those things. Focus on them. So how do we prepare how do we prepare? Well, it's kind of like preparing for that great trip you want to go on. Like that, that amazing vacation that you've planned for a while. There's a lot of preparation that goes into that. A lot of preparation. You know, it's kind of like we're going to get ready here to take a trip to Israel in spring of 2021. If you're interested in going on that trip, next weekend after every service, they're going to have an informational meeting in the community room. And you're going to hear about the trip. You're also going to hear about it way in advance, right? 2021 is when this trip happens. Why? Because you're going to need to prepare. It's a big deal. When we're preparing, planning for that trip to Disneyland, for example, like I saw a post uh, this Christmas about a family that's going to Disneyland. That was their big gift to one another. You think they just hung out the tree and said, hey, by the way, we're going to Disneyland. <laughs> no. Are you kidding me? There was preparation in announcing it. You know why I know? Because the picture on Facebook, they all had the same shirts on. Mickey Mouse their name on it, grandpa, grandma. There's like 10 of them. They all had their own shirts on. They're going to Disneyland. I mean, there's pre preparation in the preparation. That's what we should be living out, preparing for heaven. How do we do that? What do we prepare with and what do we prepare for? How do we, you and I, prepare for heaven? Well, again, I'm glad you asked because that's important. What should we focus on? What should we focus on? Well, first of all, before I tell you that, let me just, because I, I have to share with you what I brought up. <clears throat> you need to know that um, heaven is a place, as best we can, best we can hang, hold on to is how great it's going to be. So does that mean that the stuff in this world we should ignore? Does that mean, that who, who, who created this world we live in? God? Didn't he create the pleasures as well? Didn't he create good things for us to enjoy now? You bet he did. You bet he did. But it pales in comparison. I, I believe this life, as I've heard before, is really preparation. God prepares us for heaven through our difficulties, and he prepares us through our joys and celebrations as well. Which leads me to this. This is the, fa this is the best candy ever created, ever invented. M&M's. This is my favorite. Now, I'm not talking peanut M&M's or hazelnut M&M's or pretzel M&M's or birthcake M&M's or almond M&M's or dark chocolate M&M's or any other M&M you can think of. This is the one. Milk chocolate M&M's. Right? Now, it's kind of like a taste of heaven now. See, this, this is the fun size. This is the fun size. This has got maybe about, unfortunately now, down to about eight little M&M's in there. There's a little bit of fun packed in that bag and a lot of air, but it's in there. It's the fun size. So this is the joys now that we live in. This is heaven. <laughs> this is the party size. Woo party in a bag right here. The party size M&Ms. Now, heaven. Right? Now, I know you're looking at me going, you've had a few of these bags, haven't you? Yeah. Maybe. Not all in one sitting. I would love to be able to do that. 
Let's be real. I love it. I enjoy, I, I enjoy M&M so much. I have to really hold back from them. I pace myself the older I get. Just because I want it all now doesn't mean I get it all now. You see, having a perspective that heaven is greater and, 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 and pleasurable and God has a great plan. He gives us great new bodies. He gives us a place to live in heaven. We get to be together in heaven. We got to learn how to live with each other in heaven. Now, brothers and sisters, we got to get along. We got to love each other. Those are the things that we prepare for. So the good things, along with the challenges, but the good things, God gave it to us now. It gives us a taste of heaven. A taste. What goes with us to heaven? What can we do? Jesus said this, Matthew chapter 6, store yourselves Store your treasures in heaven where they cannot be destroyed by moths or rust and where thieves cannot break in and steal. Your heart will be where your treasure is. What can we store up in heaven now? I would say two things. Because this life is preparation. Two things. One, we can grow in our character of Christ. We can grow to be more like Jesus to the world around us. We can grow in our relationship with God now. Heaven's a long, eternity's a long time. Heaven, but this life's preparation. Let's not lose the opportunity to prepare for what God's planned for us for eternity. It's not just a feeling, it's a place. It's not just a place that we see, it's a place we're a part of. Tangibly, new bodies, relationships with our brothers and sisters, more than we could ever imagine. So let's prepare well in our hearts now. As we go into 2020, let's prepare. Like, let's just, let's not get, let's not move the needle all the way to the end. How about just little things over time? Spending more time in the Word. Prayer. January is a great time to, just to reset with prayer and fasting. So there's our character that we can store treasure up with and through. And then the other thing is Relationships. I told you, I mentioned earlier, we're going to be in heaven together. Maybe we should practice getting along with each other now. It's just a thought. I mean, God's got a plan for all of us to be together. Relationships. You know, you, if you've been in church for any length of time, you'll hear, hey, come serve here. Come help here. Let's go do this in the community. We don't, we don't do that and ask of that to bring any attention on us. We do that to his glory. Amen. It's preparation. I, can you think of somebody you know that you need to make sure gets to heaven? That you'd want to be a part of? That you pray for every day? That you think, oh, if he or she doesn't go. I have people like that in my life. The Lord's taken difficult circumstances this year and made me realize and shook the cobwebs and jostled me hard enough to realize there is, there's, a, there's someone that is so dear and near to me, doesn't live here, not part of my immediate family, but someone I love deeply. And if all that I go through and all that I trust God with will get him to a point where I can hang out forever with him, that's the urgency I have once again. That's the urgency you and I, that's how we store treasure in heaven. It's in relationships. I want to hang out with you and have a party. Party! Not a, oh, how you doing? How's everything going over on your block in heaven? No. <laughs> Jesus is there. We're there with him. Revelations 21. I have the first time I've used it. You probably don't even, haven't even found it yet. There it is. <laughs> he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who is seated on the throne said, I'm making everything new. I'd say it and scream it out if I could. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. That's what we have to come. Friends, the urgency of this life is preparation. The urgency is that who do we know? Sure, invite them to church. Absolutely. Definitely share your faith with them. Encourage them. Love them. How about we bring a little bit of heaven with the help of the Lord into somebody else's life so they get a taste and discover they want to be a part of that too. How about that? How's that sound? Amen. So we're going to do something a little bit different to close. Okay, pass them in the 
No M&Ms for you. <laughs> I saved the receipt. No, I didn't. They're staying with me. Um, we're going to do something a little different with our music here at the end. We've had a great, a great weekend of just reflection, our worship at the front end, and at the back end, a time of reflection. We're going to do something a little different. We've got a couple songs that the band's going to lead us in. We're not going to ask you to stand. I, just, I would want to encourage you just to take these next few minutes slow down a little bit. I get a little excited, so let's all just kind of slow down together. Let's reflect a little bit. Let's think about not what we're resolving to do in this year ahead. How about if we just take five minutes and consider and focus on heaven? How about we think about and ask the Lord to help us with those people that we know? that really need to know how much they're loved. How about we make that commitment today? Maybe you're here and um, you're like, man, I don't even, I always thought I'd just be in a line and maybe I'd just sneak in to heaven. Maybe you just need to know. Maybe today you need to say, Jesus, I, I just want to re-acknowledge that I realize again today that everything I am and all that I have is yours. And I put you in control once again in my life. I trust you with my life. Forgive me of my mistakes. I put you first. You're my Lord and Savior. I believe in what you've done. Maybe that's what you do in this time of reflection. Maybe you've never accepted Jesus, never asked him to put, you never put your trust in him. Maybe today's your day to do that. It's simple. Just tell him you love him. Invite him into your life. Ask for his forgiveness. He's done all the work. All we have to do is receive the gift of Christmas. So as they play, as they sing, the words will be up there. You sing with them. We'll do that for a few minutes and I'll come back up and close. <laughs>